let's get on to the match preview. Chelsea against Tottenham Carabao Cup semi-final first leg. Um, it's going to be a very interesting game. It's been reported that Chelsea are going to have to rest a lot of players because of um, fatigue and fitness. Uh, Spurs are rumoured to have some COVID cases. It remains to be seen what's going to happen. But on the Chelsea side, I think it's important to note that I expect, for one, Lukaku definitely to play tomorrow night. Um, it's been talked about by Fabrizio Romano. He says that Tuchel and Lukaku and the board had positive meetings over the last 24 hours and that he trained very, very well. So I fully expect him to, to start tomorrow. Do you? Uh, I expect him to start, but it's exactly what Lewis said yesterday when we did the, the preview with him. He, like we had with Harry Kane in the summer, he has to come in and set the world alight because if he's not bang up to form, he, he's opened the he's opened the trap door for fans to criticise, and uh, so it depends what type of Lukaku we get. Now we know he can be a handful. He can be an absolute nightmare, and especially if Dyer is out, that is uh, a key battle where Lukaku will really, really fancy himself. But he's got to to come out firing, and let's hope we can stop that. Yeah, most definitely. Um, and. When you look, and to be honest though, with Lukaku, I, I, I don't expect anything less than his A game tomorrow night. You know that he's going to come out, want to uh, prove a point uh, to the fans, to the club, uh, with everything that's gone on over the past week or so. So I have no doubt in my mind Lukaku's going to come out and, and put in a really big performance tomorrow night. So um, it's going to be a difficult game, that's for sure. And when you're looking at the past performances, Spurs against Chelsea, the form, we're on terrible form against them. We're on absolutely terrible form. As you can see, uh, we'll bring up the graphic for you now on your screen. But as you can see, uh, we've drawn, we've taken one point against them in the last five games. Uh, but interestingly enough, the last time we did beat them was in the 2020 season under Jose Mourinho. Um, and it was in this same competition, wasn't it? We yep. beat them on penalty shootout with Lamella uh, dragging us there uh, late on in the game. But... I guess the omens are slightly good. The last time we beat them was in this tournament. It was. I mean, also that was Regulon's debut, wasn't it? He made yeah, it was, one. Yeah. one uh, yeah. He made one wild tackle or lunge, uh, and he got dummied, and the, the cross came in, and they he scored. Just kept sliding, didn't he? Just yeah. never stopped sliding. He, it, literally, <laughs> but then he also we saw for the first time when he made a, a huge run back to dispossess someone on a break. So we saw the so we saw both sides of Regulon. Um, we also did it. Uh, do you remember a, a good few years ago when Teddy Sheringham scored a cup win, a five-one win at home? Just like we did with the that Arsenal. That was the semi-final one. as well, yeah. That was the semi-final as well. So the semi-finals uh, or this cup, we seem... We're talking about our league form. In this cup, we seem to have the better form. But obviously, our our record at Stamford Bridge is beyond atrocious. Although, I think the last time we played them in the semi-final of this tournament, we lost, didn't we? Um, I think that we beat them 1-0, I believe, in the first Oh, we went out on penalties. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and then we lost Thanks uh, for raining on my parade. Yeah, thank we you. Lost, <laughs> we lost on penalties at Stamford Bridge. Um, I'm not sure, was that the day that Trippier scored that uh, crazy own goal? No, that yeah. I know it wasn't that, because that on that actual day, I was at Pearson International Airport coming back home. Right. That was in the league 2-0. Um, that was just before the North, the last North London derby that I came back for when Aubameyang missed the penalty at Wembley. Right. So it was a few days before that. So uh, that wasn't it, but that was, a, like we said, I mean, I said it the other day, I remember listening to Gary Lineker scoring the winning goal at Stamford Bridge in 1990 on Capital Gold Radio. And then the next win was obviously when Delhi and Ericsson scored. And that's been the only two league wins. It's crazy. Isn't it's, it? And we, we go there. This is this is a, a real bad place for us to go to. Yeah, but hopefully really my first time there tomorrow will be a memorable one for the right reasons. Yeah. Um, and it's also a good omen that uh, we're sitting in the lower tier tomorrow. Because last time I sat in the lower tier at Stamford Bridge, we did win 3-1. Um, and that's the game you were talking about as well. Uh, when you're looking at the form of the two sides, uh, we'll start off with Chelsea. Um, what do you think that has happened to Chelsea over the past month or so? I mean, they back end of last season, won the Champions League. They looked unbeatable at times under Thomas Tuchel. Started this season, um, you know, normal service resumed. Yep. They looked really strong. People were talking them about, you know, title challengers. Um, a lot of people were putting them down as their favourites for the title. Um, me and Sim as well, I think, um, me. in the preview to the season. They all said Chelsea are going to win the title this year because of the way they're playing their football. They looked like a really solid outfit. Defence really strong. Um, attacking well, but, you know, not really getting as many goals last season as they should have. Lukaku comes in at the beginning of this season. They start adding those goals to their game. 
But something's happened at Chelsea and the wheels have just fallen off and they're just nowhere near um, as solid and as strong as they were. Uh, what do you think's happened to them? So, again, I can only go on what Lewis was saying. Lewis has spoke, uh, he's a great guy. And then obviously you heard um, him saying about the, the, the loss of Chilwell being absolutely massive. I mean, he is a great defender and then he's had a huge impact. Then, and I was listening to this day with Kante, uh, yesterday with Kante as well. I think it was Terry on the Football Terrace was saying, like, listen, Kante, he doesn't win battles just because he's big and strong. It's his timing and reading of that ball. And when he's in, he's, in, he's incredible. He's sublime. There's no one else like him on the planet. But when he's out, you can see yeah. what a big hole. And he's not as, he's not as uh, fit and ready as, uh, as what he has been in previous seasons. So anyone that has a Kante out of their squad, is massive. I remember the when we went to the Chelsea game, my first game, That's it was 3 0. That's a example of it, isn't it? And that we played superb in the first half, went in 0 0. You went down to have a half time drink. He came on in the second half, and by the time you come back eight minutes later, we were 2 0 down. Mm. That's a prime example, isn't it? Because we played really well in that first half. Yep. Probably the better side. Um, I go down for half time, really happy. Um, and then Kante comes on at half time, and it's game over. Yep. Game over. It was. It, it, he is unbelievable. I mean, obviously he was great at Leicester, but he just gets better and better and better. Um, he's the heartbeat of that team. And then when you've got someone like Thiago who reads the game so well, his age is showing uh, no signs. They've got a world-class spy and they've got world Cup, but there is something in it. They've now lost Rhys James as well. So mm. they've lost a lot of creativity down the flanks and uh, it's showing. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, so true. Um, the Spurs form coming into it, obviously, since Antonio Conte has come, we're unbeaten in the Premier League. We've lost one game in the Conference League to Mura, um, but definitely away form um, isn't um, the strongest, let's be honest. Since Conte's come in, we've had three away games in the league, uh, two draws, one win, and that one win was a kind of last minute, last grab win against Watford. So when you're looking at the Spurs form, how do you assess it first of all? And would you rate our chances coming into a, a tough away game at Chelsea? So the away form, let's be honest, it's been broken up because of the COVID outbreak. Mm. So, so that hasn't helped. Obviously the nil-nil against Everton was his very first game in the yeah. Premier League. Uh, we kept a clean sheet, which was already an improvement. The style of play in the actual match was horrible, but to get a clean sheet was great. Uh, Southampton was obviously a poor performance. But... We still did enough to we win that game. We should, exactly, and the goal should have stood, as we know. Two goals. And, uh, and yeah, oh, yeah, I forgot about the second one. And then the Watford game, all right, it, again, it wasn't pleasing on the eye, but it's job done. Not convincingly, but we've played three away games, two clean sheets. All right, it's not against the greatest opponents, but there's positives you can take from it, and you've got to take it that unbeaten under Conte in the league. Yes, we would have liked a, couple, a few more victories on the board, but... It's the, bit, uh, the best start to a Spurs manager in Tottenham's history. Um, what more can you say about that? But the, the away form does need to improve and we need to find a way to beat this low block because that's the stumbling block. And I think Watford, we were expecting them to come out all guns blazing. But seeing that they went low block, we just couldn't find a solution. Yeah, definitely. Um, when you're looking at the Chelsea um, squad to look at um, what players are definitely out, I mean... Rhys James ruled out, Christensen ruled out. I mean, it says Lukaku ruled out, but I think he's going to play. Yep. Um, you've got Werner ruled out, apparently. Loftus-Cheek and Shabala, uh, both doubts. And Ben Chilwell definitely ruled out. So, I mean, that's big misses for them. When you're looking at Chilwell and Rhys James, yep. it's a massive way of how they play football. And when you look at when, when Chelsea were really flying this season, those two players were the players that were really producing for them. Correct. Chilwell was scoring time and time again, uh, you know, arriving late at the back post. James was doing the exact same thing. Yep. Um, so it's going to be a massive miss for them, isn't it? It's huge. I mean, they've got Alonso. And Asper Lequetra has been a great servant to them. He's been a great servant to English football. Um, but like Lewis again said, his legs are going. His legs are going. So uh, the pace, and Alonso isn't exactly blessed with pace, is he? So if we can get some pace down those wings and just keep them back, there's a real opportunity there. But one of their players that was out that I'd taken an absolute minute, I love Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Love it. I, I mean, obviously he's not a regular starter, but I think he's a great player and I thought he would have played this game and he's another miss. 
And another player who's missing, actually, which um, which it didn't show on that graphic, was uh, Mendy, the goalkeeper. Yep. Um, with Kepper in goal, uh, surely that's a big plus for us as well because Mendy has been brilliant. He he, he has been amazing. He has been amazing. I remember a couple. He made a fantastic save from Salah from distance in the second half. Yeah. They almost collided with the post. It was a sensational save. Um, and also that game I remember against Bright, uh, Brentford earlier in the season where he was just literally making. He was here, there, everywhere. He is a great keeper. Uh, Kepa obviously had that really bad period under Lampard also he, he's known for this cup in the final with Man City when he wouldn't come off um, and he won the penalty shootout for them it's all obviously a uh, a big plus for us not having Mendy but Kepa has the potential to be a great goalkeeper on his day so it, it is a positive for us but it depends what Kepa comes out yeah that's very true um, and a few uh, stand up players for Chelsea the ones to watch um Jorginho has scored six goals this season. I mean, all of them penalties, I think. Um, but Mason Mount, I've been really impressed with Mason Mount this season. Um, you know, you, he could have been accused last season for not having any, any enough goals or goal contributions to his game. But he's really starting to add that this season. As you can see on your screen, five goals, six assists. And, you know, he's performing really well this season, isn't he? he he's, a, he's a great player. I mean, I did when Lampard took him to Derby, I was like, what are you do? You, you obviously use your old club to get some players in. Didn't realise he was that good. Then obviously had a great season, did good for England in the Euros. And then started off with a bit of burnout, which you'd be expect. All these players have got such a such a long se a few seasons ahead because of COVID. And he's now coming right back into form and he's a major, major concern for us. Major. How, how are you looking at this game? Are you looking at this game potentially maybe... You know, just come into this game, stay in the game um, until the home leg and then do what we can do at home. You know, maybe a, a, a narrow defeat, a draw um, or a slight victory. You know what I mean? Are you looking at just, just stay in the tie? I'm going a little bit more positive. Get the win. Get the win. I think it's going to be a, such a tight game. I've said my prediction, which I'll, I'll save till the end. But um, I think we've got to go for it. Because if you say, Joe, you know I just try and stay in the game, you're letting Chelsea on top of you. And if we let Chelsea dominate, then it could be a, a real hard night for us. But I think I think we can get take this game. You you, you go through the list there and you've got to capitalise on their weaknesses, which is a huge amount of their players out. Mm. A huge amount. And how often are you going to get this opportunity with that amount of players out? Yeah, true. And when you're looking at it, um, we don't, we've don't. we got a game in the FA Cup on the weekend, so we can rest a lot of players that way against Morecambe. So you've got a game against Chelsea, and then basically whoever's playing against Chelsea surely gets a whole seven days rest to when we next play Chelsea. You would think so. You would think so. I mean, I, I, I can see wholesale change, changes, obviously, for Morecambe, but I think he'll do what he's done before and just put a few big hitters on the bench just, just in case because of the magic of the FA Cup and we know what happens in the third round. But we should have enough. It should be enough to say, right, listen, sit down, relax. And, and who knows? There may even be a new player. I doubt it, but there may. <laughs> there might be a new player out the door, that's for sure. Yeah. With Matt Doherty uh, impending exit. Um, but even if Matt Doherty does go, maybe that leaves us um, with a lack of right-back options for the Morecambe <laughs> game, unless Tanganga plays there. Yeah, I mean, I th that's, that's the option, isn't it? That's the only option. But we I, I like I said before, I really think it may not be connected to this deal, but if that deal happens, I think Adama's Adama's like fine. sign still delivered. Whether it'll be in time for Morecambe or Chelsea, uh, actually, I don't even know if he's played in the Cups, so he might even be cup tied. Um, but yeah, you've got Tanganga there for cover for Morecambe, um, with no disrespect to Morecambe, but then we do need to bring a right back in or a right wing back. How do we hurt this Chelsea side then? Um, how do we hurt them? Who? What formation do you reckon we're going to be playing? So we'll have to see. Uh, it's hard for me because I, I prefer the three-five-two. I think you get the best out of Harry Kane if you play three-five-two. Um, and if it is wider than Mark and Kane hasn't got obviously, and Kane does love a goal against Chelsea. Um, we all remember his first game against Chelsea when he tore them apart at White Hart Lane. And we won five-three. Um, he does love a goal against this lot. Um, so. It depends on does Lucas Moura start because I think Lucas Moura can run at that defence and cause problems. Kovacic isn't exactly the most mobile um, person if he plays. So I think Lucas Moura could have a huge part to play in this game. Yeah, um, I've got a feeling it's going to be a similar formation to what we played against Liverpool with those three in midfield. I think that when you're looking at the Chelsea team, their midfield is bloody strong. Kovacic, Jorginho, Kante in the middle. So 
Um, whatever formation they play, they're going to have a really strong midfield. So we need to beef up that midfield and make sure we don't get overrun in there. Yep. And I think adding that extra man in there can do a lot to help us. Um, we need to have Son and Kane ready there so we can spring on them. Maybe Lucas can play in a kind of um, number 10 or kind of a deep, uh, uh, an advanced midfielder role um, so we can utilise him a bit more. So we're very strong on that counter-attack. And he also can put a foot in as well, can't he? He, he can, but as you were just saying, those, those three players that we just mentioned for, or you just mentioned for Chelsea, great players, great passing ability, great uh, other attributes. But the one thing they're not, all three of them are blessed with his pace. Mm. Well, Kante, he has Kante, got a bit of pace. He's got a bit man. of pace and stamina. He's got a, he's got an engine bit like no one else in the league. Um, but I wouldn't say he's blessed with pace. Like if there's a foot race between him and Mora, or Mora and any of those three, then there's only one mm. winner. So I think that is the one chink in that three's armour, is, is the pace. If we can flood it and with Sun running, um, that's a potential way to get through to him. Mm. All right. Uh, well, that is our preview. Just before we move on, what is your score prediction uh, for tomorrow? So night? I'm going to have to do two because I've always said until he wakes up, I'm going to go with Bob Spur every single time and say 4-1 But my, to us. But my actual prediction is 3-2 to us. 3-2 Spurs. Oof. That's going to be some head of a battle yep. if it is 3-2 to Spurs. Um, I'm going to go a bit more conservative. I'm going to go for 1-1 uh, tomorrow night. And I think 1-1 would actually be a really good result to take back to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. So I'm going 1-1. Brian's going 4-1 and 3-2 uh, to Spurs. Uh, but I want to know your predictions in the comment section below as well. But that is our match preview. Yeah!